A nightmare is coming. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. And our lead story today, this just crashed by 50%. And as you're about to see, this is just only the beginning of what is to come. Plus, we have a sponsor for today's show. I'd like to introduce you to Ivita Solutions. You can find them on the NASDAQ under the symbol IVDA. And you may have noticed that following a day of a promotion, the stock price of our sponsor usually goes vertical. And this is one you're not gonna wanna miss out on. They're an AI video platform specializing in the surveillance technology space. They've got analyst ratings with a strong buy on them. And we're gonna show you the initial move of what we see as a 30% move to the upside. Stay tuned to the end of the show or check out the pinned comment or description for more information. Now let's head over to Germany first because I want to set up just what is starting to happen around the world. And then we're gonna look at how the regulators are pretty much looking the other direction at this. And then we're gonna get into the US where we're going to see that things are starting to crash by as much as 50% and it's only going to get worse. So here we go with Bloomberg's headline, Germany's office property slump accelerates. There's a key word with record drop as prices for office buildings tumble 13% alone here in the fourth quarter. Now we talk about the US commercial real estate crisis that is coming. The one thing we haven't really seen much of, even though we've seen some transactions at lower prices, we haven't seen any sort of big move to revalue the entire property space down in terms of price. There's a big reason they don't want to do this is because a lot of these small and mid-sized regional banks are sitting on massive amounts of commercial real estate loans that are due to renew this year. These loans are all coming due and they're coming due at higher rates. But the problem with the commercial real estate space is they've all bet, the banks have bet big, that the valuations will never drop. The downturn accelerated in the fourth quarter with a 13% drop from the previous year. For the full year, prices slumped more than 10%. The most since records began back in 2003. Now, mind you, this predates, of course, the global financial crisis. So this is a big move to the downside. And the outlook is for further declines at the start of 2024. And the commercial real estate space is absolutely critical for these smaller banks. Now, the larger banks, the big commercial banks, they don't hold a lot of commercial real estate loans, but the small and mid-sized banks are massive players here. And we've noted in the past that these banks are largely insolvent. They've taken a ton of money from the Fed. They continue to see an issue with deposit outflows. There's just nothing that's stopping the bleeding here. And once these loans start to come due and everyone finds out the valuations of these property are much lower than they expect, well, watch out, the next banking crisis will be here. And sure enough, the crisis in real estate is hitting offices harder than homes. This in Germany, as Germany's economy stumbles and uncertainty about workers fully returning to office mounts, quote, demand for opposites reigns subdued. This is an issue we talked about last week, how their production in terms of the industrial space is outright crashing. Eventually that leads to layoffs and lack of demand for other work and of course, buildings for people to go and work those jobs. The trouble in the commercial real estate market is threatening to plunge some banks into crisis. Well, it's gonna do more than just some. As concerns about exposure to the sector are rising, and German lenders in particular are under increasing investor scrutiny. Now, mind you, there's going to be a point where investors are going to scrutinize every bank around the country. By the time that starts to get to forefront of major news, we're going to be in an all out financial crisis. Again, not much different in terms of what we saw during the global financial crisis, this time only worse. The difference is going into the GFC, the banks weren't insolvent. They became that way. Now we already know they're insolvent before we even get there. And with potential office buyers still demanding steeper discounts than most sellers are prepared to offer, German commercial real estate is likely to remain weak. So you notice there's a big spread here, a big issue in Germany. Prices are already coming down and buyers don't want to pay offering price. They want to offer much lower prices, suggesting that there is going to be a massive repricing of commercial real estate in the coming months and over the next year. Again, this hasn't hit the U.S. yet, but the issue here is, well, the regular Regulators, they're already kind of keen to a problem is how they're handling it that's going to put us into the next crisis. As Yellen says, commercial property is a worry, but regulars, not don't worry, you don't need to worry. 
Well, we're all over this one. She says that while losses in commercial real estate are a worry, U.S. regulars are working diligently, of course, to ensure that low loss reserves and liquidity levels in the financial system are adequate to cope. Now, notably, what we see here is Ms. Yellen is not suggesting that she knows what the problem is or that there's even a solution. The issue here is, look, the banks are going to hemorrhage here at some point, and all we're telling them to do is triage this problem before it gets out of hand. We know they're going to lose money. We don't know how much. We don't even know why. All we know is they need to set more money aside for these losses. And so this is a big difference in coming out and saying, look, we identified a problem here, and we're going to get in front of it, try to solve it, figure out what the issue is, and then make policy to deal with it. Instead, it's just the same old plan. Well, just put more money aside and you'll get it figured out. And she notes that this is gonna put a lot of stress on owners of these properties. She cited that the increase in interest rates, of course, we could look to the Fed, which she was the chair of not too long ago, higher vacancy rates thanks to shifting work patterns triggered by the pandemic, and get this, a wave of commercial real estate loans coming due this year. So what are two of those issues centered around? The banks. Of course, Ms. Yellen used to regulate them over the Fed. Now she's Treasury Secretary. This is a simple story. What could you do to protect the banks right now if you don't know what is wrong? Of course, what they don't realize is they actually created part of the problem. But the issue here is you could bring interest rates down and say, look, we're going to do some things to keep the banks from blowing apart here. Instead, we're just going to ask them to put more money aside. And that doesn't seem to be working at all. In fact, New York community bank stocks has dropped more than 50%, erasing roughly $4 billion in market value since its early release on January 31st. This has happened in about nine trading days in which it announced surprise losses in a cut to dividends. So again, you see what's going to happen to the banks. One of them's already seen their stock get hammered by 50%. Just looking at it trading today, it tried to rally, didn't come back. And this is just one bank. And this is just the beginning of what you're going to see is going to send us into the next financial crisis. And she doesn't want to comment on the situation of an individual bank. But Ms. Yellow notes that commercial real estate is an area that we've been aware could create notably could create financial stability risks or losses in the banking system. And what the solution is, it requires careful supervisory attention because you know what? They didn't actually see the crisis coming last March. So why would they see it this time? They don't actually understand. It's a dual issue from the pandemic and tightening lending standards. They don't understand that the Fed inverting the yield curves and money curves has caused a lack of credit creation in our economy. There isn't just enough money around to support these higher valuations. Of course, the buildings, as you're about to see, are still empty in a big way. And property owners are coming under pressure due to soaring borrowing costs, causing companies, including Brookfield, an office landlord managed by Pacific Investment Management, to default on debt. Office owners are particularly struggling as higher borrowing costs complicate financing and tenants pull back given layoffs and the rise of remote work. Again, one way to solve this problem, of course, the Fed doesn't want to do it, would be to lower interest rates. This is one of the reasons why making the case that the Fed is going to get to zero when the next crisis hits as fast as they've ever gotten to zero in the past is going to be the biggest move down in interest rates. And you can see it brewing now because their only solution is Look, banks, you need to set more money on side for losses. What's the problem? They don't have a whole lot of money to do that with. The Treasury chief said banking supervisors have been focused on the issue, looking to make sure lenders' reserves and liquidity are adequate to handle the problem. And how do you fix that problem? Well, you tell them to put more money aside for loan losses and tell them it's okay to go to the Fed discount window when you need cash, even though, of course, when banks start going to the Fed window in a big way, it's going to ring the alarm bells among consumers and investors all over the world. Because now we see the bank stocks crash, but something else is crashing as well. And that too is going to get worse. As office building remains half empty, but U.S. cities can shrug it off. We see occupancy rates have hovered near 50% since January 2023. And you think about this, if we head into a recession, is that number going to go up or down? Well, it's simple. As more people hit the unemployment line, well, that means you're going to have more vacancies in those offices as companies look to restrict and restrain how much space they need. They're going to cut back in big ways. Here we can see office occupancy in 10 
and the largest U.S. metropolitan areas rose to a new high of 53% for the week ending January 31st. Now we talk about this potential no landing or soft landing scenario. Does this look like one? No, because if the economy was expanding here, don't you think there would be an increased demand in office space? Then there certainly would. We're seeing just the opposite here, suggesting that even though the weekly unemployment claims on a seasonally adjusted basis aren't reflecting what appears to be the reality of the current U.S. labor market. And the firm's barometer on how corporate return to office policies has going, been hovering around that level for the last 13 months, but that's not the issue. Cities are shrugging off the empty offices, as if we didn't need them to begin with, and its implications for the commercial real estate market, because they can. For now, until the next crisis hits, and what we're going to see is municipalities all around the United States are going to be screaming and crying for money in a huge way, as you're about to see. Commercial real estate is not just a key driver of general fund revenues for the majority of local governments. So they're saying, look, it's no big deal. Declines can be managed through careful expenditure management and or stability in other revenue sources, including residential property taxes, sales tax, and utility taxes. So they don't quite get it this simple. Just if everything else stays fine and maybe you raise taxes in other areas and you lose a little bit of the commercial real estate side, it's no big deal. Well, the problem is it's going to be a huge deal. These analysts have kind of missing the boat here. And to be sure the bedrock of most municipal finance is the property tax. And any decline, there's a key board, any decline in a property's assessed valuation, which has not really happened yet, which are affected by vacancy rates, will translate to a decrease in taxes collected. How deep those declines are can vary and will determine the impact on each city. So here you can see what is coming. The valuations of these buildings are going to get reset down. They're going to get less taxes at the local and county levels. And what that means is there's going to be a budget crisis all around counties and municipalities all over the United States this to come later this year. And the full impact of commercial real estate valuations declines on tax revenue will likely be phased in over several years, allowing time for contingency plans to take hold. And this is why I wanted to start to show out and talk about what's going on in Germany. And normally the prices were accelerating. You see the biggest drop since record data was on record. Then here in the U.S., it's like, well, the prices are going to go down, but really slowly. And it's not even going to be noticeable to the point where everyone will be able to adapt to it. The issue will happen is when prices start to crumble here, everyone's going to panic. And here we can see what we know is this is going to lead to some level of tax shifting where residential and other commercial properties end up shouldering a larger share of the tax burden, given that the office share of assessed value has declined relative to other properties. But going, the view here is this would only be felt gradually. I disagree completely. Now let's head over to China because we know here in the U.S. everyone is just, well, convinced that nothing's going to go wrong and that we have all these wonderful regulators who have their eye on the supervisor advisory level here that they're going to make sure these banks are safe by making sure they have more loan losses and plenty of liquidity and yet they're missing the whole issue here that inverting all these money curves has led to the fact that property values are going to come down we'll show you this chart here in a bit well, let's head over to china because property crisis is starting to ripple across the world and what have we noted this wasn't just a u.s issue this is not just a germany issue this is an everybody issue in a big way of course, we see here in China that the worldwide slump triggered by borrowing cost hikes, again, central banks inverting money curves, has already wiped off more than one trillion off of office property values alone. This from Starwood Capital Group's chairman. But the total damage is still unknown because so few assets have been sold, leaving appraisers with little recent data to go on. In fact, completed commercial properties deals globally sank to the lowest level in decade last year with owners unwilling to sell buildings at steep discounts. You think about this from the labor market, the construction sector. Well, if no one's demanding properties being built, no one even wants the ones we've got. Well, that means people in the construction sector, they're gonna face mass layoffs as well as demand goes down. Meanwhile, regulators in the market is nervous that this logjam could be concealing large unrealized losses don't worry my friends they are the problem will be is how big they are spelling trouble for both banks who push further into brick and mortar lending during the cheap money area and asset owners again putting the entire global banking system in a state of insolvency at the same time again this is all coming this year
And just this week, we note that Canary Wharf is selling for 60% less than it sold for 2017 after it was seized by lenders from Chinese investors. The sales are part of a rebound in disposals after some developers paused for breath last year while working on restructuring plans. Could you only imagine what would happen to the U.S. banking system if buildings were repriced down by 60%? You would watch bank after bank fail. There's no way they can set aside enough money to handle such losses losses like that. They're already on the edge now. And yet, of course, the regulators, they just don't seem to care. But as we look back now over to Europe, we see the problem is still dealing with everyone. This is an everyone issue. As a banks are under a microscope with property worrisome swirling here, what do we know? Investors and executives have been on the edge after smaller banks from New York to Tokyo were hit by rising defaults in commercial real estate. An asset class has been in sharp decline as last year's spike in interest rates compounded challenges from the shift to work from home. The concern spread to Europe this week when PBB's bonds slumped because of exposure to troubled US market. So here we can see, as we've noted, when money curves get inverted and you constrict the creation of credit, what is the very next thing that happens? Well, you get an increase in delinquencies. We see that in this chart here. If you look at the net percentage of domestic banks tightening standards for commercial industrial loans to firms of all sizes against the delinquency rate in commercial real estate loans. Now, going back into the 2000s, we know we had the dot-com bubble, of course, banks tightened lending standards, and a lot of things came down, mainly tech companies. But what we didn't see was a remarkably in big increase in the delinquency rate. It went up a little bit because there was still a demand for office space. But fast forward now to the global financial crisis, which you know was started in the residential real estate space. Banks tightened lending spanners, delinquencies, boy, they just shot higher. This time, of course, we don't have an update yet on the data, but we know where this is going. Banks continue to keep lending standards tight. Why? Because the Fed continues to keep the curve inverted. But don't worry, the Fed isn't listening, but the alarm bells are ringing in a big way. As we see from this headline here, economists haven't been so critical of a tight Fed since 2010 as a rising share in the NABE poll. Says Fed policy is too restrictive and central bank has pushed back expectations for timing of easing, suggesting everyone's starting to wake up to the reality that the Fed needs to cut rates. They need to start doing that. Inflation isn't going to be the issue here when commercial real estate prices start to come crashing down and the banks are turned into ins go into insolvency and then they go into default and out of business completely. Inflation is going to be the last of our problems. But one thing we do believe is poised for massive growth is the stock for our sponsor, Iveda Solutions. They're on the NASDAQ under the symbol IVDA. As we started the show, they're a video platform, and boy, they've got some analysts behind us and predicting a massive move in the stock. In fact, it's moving today. And what we can note is that in the past, when we've had a sponsor on the show following the first day of our sponsorship on the show, the stock takes off. You're not gonna to wanna to miss out on this one. I'm gonna show you potential 37% move. It's already beginning today. And Iveda, they're an AI video platform, internet of things and smart city technology. They make it easier to search, manage, analyze, and secure your stuff. And here you can see they have 60,000 plus cameras installed with over 300 projects. They've been in business a long time, over 17 years across 19 countries. They are digital transformation pioneers. Since 2005, they've been developing and delivering cloud-based video AI surveillance technologies. Today, Iveda is at the forefront of digital transformation, providing solutions to many cities and organizations around the world. And here you can see they actually have the technology to do smart, safe and smart cities, elderly care, public health, school safety security, building security, you name it. This company, they have got it covered and they are the largest AI video analytics offering in today's market. They're compatible with existing cameras and the robust set of AI video analytics helps organizations access intelligent detection capabilities, elevate situational awareness, and provide critical alerts within seconds. 
Our solutions are tailor-made to meet your specific product requirements and can scale with your business and growth needs. And something we think is going to scale and grow is their stock price. Again, check them out on the NASDAQ here under symbol IVDA because analysts, they're behind this too. Here we see Maxim Group's got a strong buy with a price target of $1.50. That would be nearly a 3x move for the stock. Let's make the case here on the charts. Let's look at the first move of this because today the stock price started to shoot up. We know this thing is likely to continue to break out as we've noted in the past companies that are featured on the show tend to see a big move over the following days look at this volume profile line over the last six months you can see buyers coming down here look the stock came down deep in the supply zone and then went rocketing higher we think the same setup is likely now sellers came in drove it right down to the supply zone buyers ate up all the supply you see the six month volume profile where they've been buying everything underneath here now as the sellers are worked out the stock is starting to take off we can zoom in here to the 90 day chart what do we see a very clear picture at 60 cents that's where all the big players have been buying up the shares as sellers get out and now the stock is taking off in a big way and we think another big move here is right on the cusp again you can find them iv solutions on the nasdaq under symbol iv DA. And as always, with any company we feature on the show, you're under no obligation to purchase their stock. Be sure to do your own research before placing any trades. And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.